Hey everyone and welcome back to another Tuesday Tip and also welcome to the very first video in my BMX Explained series. This is a series going in depth on different geometry of BMX parts as well as in depth on certain concepts and tricks to learn while riding your bike. This video, the very first video, we are going to be covering the terminology of an entire BMX bike starting from the top to the bottom, from the front to the back. We're going to go over every single part and what it's called and some of the different terms in regards to geometry and I will also point you to videos that I have going very in depth about the parts when I have them. So first, let's start at the very top here. And let's talk about the bar ends and some of these things might be very obvious to some of you but other people don't know these things so we have to cover the entire bike. The bar ends can be either metal or plastic and they go in the ends of the bars to protect you in case of a fall or protect the turf that you're riding on. Then we move in and we've got the grips. Everybody knows what a grip is, so let's not spend any more time on that. Moving in from there, some people have brakes on their bike. So here I've got my brake lever and my upper gyro cables because I'm using a gyro setup. Some people have different setups, but that's a little more in depth than we wanna get for this video. So let's move over a little bit further and we've got the handlebars. When it comes to the handlebars, we've got four different geometric terms to know, and I've got an in-depth video about this, which is linked in the description with every other video that I mentioned, just to get that out of the way. These terms are the rise, the width, the up sweep, and the back sweep. Check that video out if you want to know what those things mean. Then we move a little bit further down, and we've got the stem. The stem has a few different geometric terms to cover as well, which I do have a specific in-depth video about, but the two main ones that you might hear are the rise and the reach of the stem. Moving downward on my bike, I have a gyro. A gyro is what allows me to spin my handlebars all the way around and still have brakes without tangling up a brake cable. There's not a ton to know there, so let's move on from there. After that, we've got the gyro tabs. These are holes in our frame that allow tabs to be drilled in in order to put these little barrel adjusters, this is what these are called, into the tabs and allow us to use our gyro brakes. From there, we can move down to the forks. I do have a very, very in-depth video about BMX fork geometry, which is kind of crazy and it gets a lot more technical than it might appear. But the main thing that you're going to hear about when it comes to BMX forks is the offset. Underneath our stem and above our fork, we also have our headset bearings. These are just bearings that press into the top and bottom of the fork and allow our bars to turn the way that they do. There's really not anything to talk about geometrically when it comes to the headset because the bearings are both exactly the same and that is called campy spec, which is something that you'll never need to know. If you ever need to know anything about your headset, just know that it's an integrated headset if it's built into the frame. If it's not built into the frame, it means that you have a pressing cup headset and if you have any issues with that or you need to replace anything with that, I would just personally recommend taking it to your local bike shop because they're going to know exactly what you need and exactly how to fix it. On top of the stem, we have our headset cap. It's also known as a compression cap and it's just how we keep compression on our headset bearings and keep our bearings and all of our front assembly tight. Moving on from there, talking about something that is directly connected to the fork, we have a peg. A peg can be made of metal, or it can be metal with a plastic sleeve, or it can be solid plastic. And the main geometric things that we hear about when it comes to pegs is the width and sometimes the circumference and how big around the peg is itself. It's pretty self-explanatory and pegs can go on either side of the bike, both front or rear or both. And people ride varying amounts of pegs from one, two, three, and sometimes even four. Moving on from there, we've got the front wheel. Starting at the top of the front wheel, we have our tires. When it comes to tires, there's one huge geometric thing that people care about, and that is the size of the tire. This is something that has varied greatly throughout the years of BMX and can go anywhere from 1.75 all the way up to 2.5, and this is a number in inches. Let's talk about rims next. There's a few different geometric terms when it comes to the rim. We have the ERD, the width, and the sidewall height of the rim, and I'm going to make an in-depth video about this, so if you're watching in the future, chances are I probably have it linked in the description below. These things don't matter a ton in everyday use, but they do have an effect, and they can matter, so you should know what they are. 
moving from there, we've got the nipples. The nipples are something that there's not a lot to talk about. They can be made of alloy or they can be made of brass. The brass are much more durable just for everyone's information. Then we've got the spokes. The spokes can be different lengths depending upon the rim and the hub that you have. They can be different thicknesses and spokes can have different amounts of budding which literally just means that they're thicker and skinnier in different areas along the length of the spoke to keep weight down while also keeping strength in mind. Moving down from there, at the end of my spokes, you'll see this disc looking thing. This is called a hub guard. And literally it's just there to guard the hub and the spokes and make them last longer so you can have those on any spot that you can have a peg and it will extend the life of your BMX hub. And since we're talking about hubs so much, let's talk about the hub. The hub is in the center of the rim and it's literally just the center point of the rim with bearings in an axle so that your wheel can spin and let you move. When it comes to BMX hubs, there's not a ton to talk about as far as geometry goes. There is something called flange distance, which has an effect on the length of the spokes that you need for the rim that you have, but it's not something that you need to consider in day-to-day -day riding, just whenever you're buying a new hub or a new rim for that matter. And while we're on the topic of BMX hubs, we can talk about the fact that there are female and male axles on the hubs. This literally just means that there's either bolts that go into the hub to bolt it onto the bike, or there's a stud that goes through the hub that axle nuts go onto, which you tighten onto the bike that way. Now to cover a few different nuances when it comes to BMX wheels and all of the things that make them up, one, I will answer a question that I get all the time. What's the tennis ball for? Literally, it doesn't do anything. I just found it one day while I was riding my bike. And then after that, we've got tubes inside our tires, which come in varying sizes for different size wheels, as well as different size tires. So you can get a very skinny tube that's not made for a bigger tire, or you can get a very thick wide tube that's not made for a very skinny tire, like the difference between racing and freestyle tires. Racing tires are much thinner and skinnier, and BMX tires for freestyle are much thicker generally. After that, we've got the valve stem, which is on the tube itself, and then a valve stem cap. Moving on, let's talk about the central part of the bike, the frame. I do have a very in-depth video about frame geometry explaining all of the different dimensions and measurements and what they mean. So let's just run through the terms and what these things are called right now. Up front, we've got the head tube. It's the tube that goes up and down. Attached to that, we've got the top tube and the bottom tube. The top tube has a length, and that is the length that you will hear whenever you hear people talking about frame size on a BMX bike. Moving back from here, we've got the seat tube. The seat tube also has a height to it, which is something you will hear about. Then we've got the bottom bracket tube, which is connected to the bottom tube and the seat tube. Within the bottom bracket tube on our frame, we also have our bottom bracket, which is just two bearings and a spacer that go inside this tube right here. There is a geometric thing that goes with that in that bottom bracket tubes come in different lengths. So the length of the spacer that you need between your bearings could vary between different frames. Then moving backward, we've got our seat and chain stay tubes. We can have brakes attached to either of these. I've got seat stay brakes, and whenever you have brakes on the bottom, they are called chain stay brakes. Then in the middle of our seat stay tubes, we've got a tube that goes across here. This is called the seat stay bridge. And then there's also different aspects of how a chain stay is attached to the bike. It can be attached with the tubes, or it can be attached with a wishbone, which is just another tube that these chain stay tubes are attached to. Then moving backward on the frame, we can talk about our dropouts. The dropouts are where the seat and chain stay tubes come together and meet at a point that is welded on where the wheel slides in and that is your dropout. Moving back forward, let's talk about the parts in the middle of the bike. First, we've got our seat and seat post, very self-explanatory. This is the seat, this is the seat post. There have been a few different designs for the way that seats and seat posts have worked throughout the years, but they're all pretty similar and self-explanatory to understand. Moving down from there, we've got our seat post clamp. Quite literally, it clamps the seat post in place onto the frame. Moving down from there, we've got our cranks and our cranking system. First, let's talk about the pedals. These can be metal or plastic or plastic with metal pins in them. They can be sealed bearings or unsealed bearings. 
but in general, pedals are pedals and you know what pedals are. Then we've got the cranks. Pretty much on 99% of modern BMX bikes, the cranks are called three-piece cranks and I have a very, very, very in-depth video about the length of BMX cranks and the geometry and different aspects that they can affect. To put it very simply, all BMX cranks have a length to them and that crank length is really the only geometric term that you're ever going to have to think or worry about whenever you're talking about cranks on your BMX bike. Moving across the bike to the side that you really can't see that well, but we've got our sprocket over here. A sprocket can come in varying different sizes and that can have an effect on the way that your bike feels when it's pedaling. And this is something that you probably have heard about a little bit, but it does matter and it can have a huge change or effect on the bike in the way that it feels. It also can have different designs as far as it can be a guard sprocket or a non-guard sprocket. And these are just simple things that mean the sprocket has a guard on it to protect your chain while doing different grinds or stalls, or it doesn't. It can also be spline drive or bolt drive or socket drive. The socket drive is proprietary to very specific cranks. Spline drive is where the sprocket has splines that match up with the splines of your cranks instead of using a bolt so that whenever you take pedals with your cranks, the sprocket moves with it without needing a bolt. And that means that the bolt is very self-explanatory and is where a bolt goes through your sprocket into your crank and that is what moves your sprocket whenever you take cranks forward. Between the sprocket and the rear of our bike is our chain. And this is something that I'm sure all of you have heard of before. And there's really not a lot of variation in BMX freestyle chains other than from the low end to the top end and half link and full length chains. And really there's not a lot that needs to be worried about here. And if you are worrying about that, you're probably more advanced than this video. Moving to my brakes. Brakes are also very simple on BMX bikes. Like I said, they can either go on the seat stay or the chain stay, and there's not a lot of variation, and there's really no geometric terms when it comes to the brakes. We also forgot to talk about, I have a London Mod setup. That is what it's called whenever you have two lower gyro cables instead of one that mates up to two up in the front. And that is something I really don't wanna get into when it comes to this video. Let's keep it simple. So moving backward to the back of the bike. We've already talked about pegs. Pegs on the back are exactly the same as pegs on the front. We've got a hub guard back here as well, but it's metal instead of plastic like the front one. And this is generally something you'll see on the back of a BMX bike because the rear peg and the rear end of the bike with pegs takes a little bit more abuse. Then we've got the wheel is the last thing to talk about. As far as the tires, the tubes, the rim, the spokes, those are all exactly the same, as well as the axles as far as female and male axles go in the rear of the bike. The difference lies in the hubs. You can either have a free coaster hub or a cassette hub. Some BMX bikes might have a free wheel and it's very rare that you might see a coaster brake. A free coaster, it just simply allows the bike to roll backwards without having to pedal backwards the way a cassette would. A cassette is where whenever it rolls backwards, you have to pedal it backwards to match the motion of the wheel. A free wheel is a similar style to a cassette, but everything is contained in a self-contained unit that screws onto the hub itself. And like I said, you generally don't see those in freestyle BMX anymore. Maybe some on the race side, I'm not totally sure, but that does it for the terminology of every single part on a BMX bike. I hope that this served a purpose for you. I hope that you learned something. If you did and you want to know more, check out the description for an entire list of videos of the different specific aspects that I covered in this video. If you did learn something and you're new here, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. I want to thank you guys for all being here and watching. And uh, there's something on my channel if you're new that I like to do. First of all, thank you for being here and watching. I really hope that you learned something and hopefully you'll subscribe so that we can see you tomorrow for another video. Thanks again and goodbye.